Hi second grade, it's Mrs. Ross. This week, we're going to read a story that is based on true events that actually happened. And this story is a story about friendship, an unusual friendship between a cat and a bird. Bet you didn't know that cats and birds could be friends, did you? Well, we'll see in this story that this friendship was really unique. And I have some pictures at the end to show you the real cat and bird that this story is about. Are you ready? Let's go. Cat and Crow, An Amazing Friendship by Lisa Fleming. Once there was a kitten who was all alone in the world. She had no mother to take care of her and no brothers or sisters to play with. A generous couple named Wally and Ann Kalito wanted to help, so they put food on their porch for her. One day, while the kitten was eating, a mighty wind swept her off the porch. Because she was small and frail, the kitten began to roll down the yard. Perched on a maple tree, a crow had been watching. He looked like all the other crows in the neighborhood, but today, this ordinary crow did something extraordinary. He flew to the kitten, dug his claws into the ground, and covered her with his outstretched wings. Shielded from the wind, the kitten was safe and warm. Wally and Ann could not believe their eyes. From that moment on, the kitten and crow became friends. As summer arrived, green grass covered the yard. The kitten was growing up fast. When she meowed, the crow flew down from the maple tree. He always came when the little cat called. They played hide and seek, tossed toys around, and explored every corner of the vegetable garden. From their kitchen, Wally and Ann watched the friendship blossom all summer long. Ann liked to set a plate of food on the lawn and watch them share a snack. Sometimes the crow caught worms and brought them back for the kitten to eat placing them gently in her mouth. After lunch, a nap. As the crow nestled in her soft fur, the kitten purred and curled around his body. Everybody said that a cat and crow could never be friends, but Wally and Ann knew better. They named the cat Cassie and the crow Moses. From then on, they were a family. Fall arrived and the leaves turned red, gold, and brown. Because it was cold, Cassie the cat lived in Wally and Ann's house. Moses the crow preferred the outdoors. Every morning, Moses peeked in the front door. He watched Cassie eat her breakfast, then used his beak to tap, tap, tap on the pane. Although Wally opened the door, Moses waited on the porch for his friend to come out. One day, as they romped in the fallen leaves, Cassie rolled on her back and pawed the crow's pointy beak. Moses hopped on top of her and flapped his wings, tickling her whiskers. Are they fighting or playing? Wally asked. They're playing, of course, Anne said. Suddenly, Cassie saw something and ran toward the road. A car is coming, Anne shouted from the open doorway. Moses flew across the yard and landed in front of Cassie, just as she was about to step into the street. He cawed and cawed as if to say, cars, cars, Stay away from the cars. 
The crow saved her, Wally said. He's a hero. It was winter and Cassie had grown into a long, sleek cat. Moses was no bigger and no smaller. He looked exactly the same as he always did. The air was crisp and cold, but that didn't keep Cassie and Moses from heading out for a day of play. Moses hopped and flopped. Cassie ran and pounced. The two tumbled and rolled in the snow. A large tomcat spotted the black crow in the white flakes and ran toward him. Moses flew up into the nearest tree. Unafraid, Cassie met the tom with a growl. It was her turn to protect her friend. The surprised tomcat hissed and slunk away. Then a dog showed up. This was turning out to be a busy day. Cassie gave the dog a face full of claws and the dog dashed away with a yelp. From her perch, Moses squawked three times. Ka, ka, ka. It sounded like laughter. It was spring and the leaves were green again. Frogs sang in the pond and crows filled the sky. But Cassie and Moses were nowhere to be found. Ann and Wally looked for them everywhere and posted signs that said, cat and crow missing, but no one called. Then one day, Cassie came home. Ann and Wally searched for Moses, but they couldn't find him. I think Moses knew his job was done, Wally said. I'm going to miss that silly old crow tapping on our door, Anne said. Me too, said Wally. Somewhere out there in the world, there's a crazy crow who's part cat, and we've got a cat who hops around like a crow. We can learn a lesson from these two, said Anne. They were as different as can be, but still became the best of friends. So what happened to Moses and Cassie? Moses spent, Moses the crow spent every day with Cassie for four years. His whereabouts are unknown. So the next time you see a crow, you never know, it could be Mo. Cassie continues to live in the Calido home in North Attleboro, Massachusetts. The same place where she first met Moses. In the winter, she travels with Wally to their Florida home where she likes to look for lizards on the lanai. And here are some real pictures of Cassie and Moses, best friends. They're sharing their snack, standing together. Here they're playing and here they're laying together. So I want you to think about the friendship that Moses and Cassie had. You have friendships. Do you have any friendships that are unique like this one? Or do you do some of the same things that maybe Cassie and Moses did, like play, share a snack, or disappear together? I hope not. But you probably have stood up for your friends as well, just like Moses and Cassie did for each other. So go ahead and think about your friendships and you're going to write about one of them. We can't wait to read about your special friendship. We'll see you next week. Bye.